What's up everyone? I know that this is a video that a lot of you have been waiting for. Today we'll be installing and tuning bigger fuel injectors on the EVO 8. So a while back, in fact a pretty long time ago, we did install a bigger FP71 HTA turbo on the 8. And due to work I basically had to daily this thing and it didn't leave much time to film any of the process of installing injectors and tuning it. But now that we have the Mark IV GTI as a reliable daily, um, that leaves us more time to make more EVO videos, which is awesome. So in today's video, I'm going to document the physical installation of the injectors, as well as the tune-in process on the stock ECU. If you're following along and you're also on the stock ECU, you should definitely be comfortable with EVO Scan and EVO Logger before you even watch this. There's also a few things that I've done on my stock ECU that I think that you should do as well. One of those things is to take note of your immobilizer code. You're just gonna want that just in case. The second thing is with a bigger turbo and more boost, you're gonna wanna expand your load access on your maps as well as your boost cut limit. Lastly, I've disabled lean spool because I don't want that messing with my AFR numbers and confusing me. For the tuning aspect, we are gonna use the fuel trim error um, to tune the latency and scaling of the injectors. And something important about that is there's a lot of other things that could also cause your fuel trims to be greater or less than zero. And one of those things is your intake track. So when your intake changes, your math scaling is gonna be thrown off. It's gonna be hard to tune that as well as the injectors at the same time. So if possible, I would definitely recommend doing one thing at a time. In this case, I tuned the intake first and now I'm gonna tune the injectors. If you have the stock intake, definitely throw that on while you tune the injectors and then come back to the tuning process after that's all situated. For the fuel trim data, um, on the 8 you do need to physically disconnect the battery to reset those. With the 9, when you flash over a new ROM, it will be reset. So just another important thing to note. With all that out of the way, let's get started. Alright, so we're going to get started by relieving the fuel pressure inside of the fuel rail. And a quick way to do that is just to disconnect the fuel pump while the car is running. So to access the fuel pump, we just have to remove the rear seats and then there's a cover on the fuel pump that we'll remove. And then after the car is started, we're just gonna unplug the fuel pump harness and then let the car die. Next thing I'll do is remove as much from this area as possible. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is remove these small little clips that are on the injectors and those are holding these electrical connectors in place. So you'll need like a pick or a small flathead and just pry those off. All right, now we're gonna move on to this connection right here. There's two 10 mil bolts that are holding this hard line to the fuel rail. And we'll also remove this fuel line right here. There's just a little spring-loaded clamp. All right, now we're gonna remove the two 12 mil bolts that are holding the fuel rail onto the intake manifold. And we'll also disconnect the electrical connectors to the injectors. Keep in mind there are rubber isolators under the bolts, um, so definitely don't lose those. All right, at this point, the fuel rail is separated from the intake manifold, and you could continue to remove FPR from that side and take the rail completely out of the car but uh, I don't really see the point of doing that since I have more than enough room to wiggle these injectors out and install the new ones. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, now I'm gonna install my new injectors into the fuel rail. And as always, don't forget to lubricate your O-rings. These can easily tear when you install them on the fuel rail. All right, now I'm gonna tighten down the fuel rail and I'm not gonna forget my rubber isolators. 
All right, now I'm gonna plug in my injectors and reinstall the clips. All right, getting those stupid little clips on is probably the worst part of this for me. But uh, now we could finally reinstall our lines. All right, our injectors are back installed. We have our connectors plugged in, those stupid little clips. Um, one thing I do want to note is you'll know that your injectors are installed correctly if they are snug, but you should still be able to rotate them. So these are good to go. All that's left to do under the hood is to unzip tie everything that we zip tied out of the way and uh, tidy everything up. Alright guys, well we're going to open up ECU flash and get to work on scaling our new injectors. So you'll see all of the tables on the left and we're going to open up the injector scaling table. In general, the size is going to be about 8-9% to lower than the size of the injectors. There is a handy table on Evolution M that you could reference. Um, these are basically values that other people have used. Unfortunately, I couldn't find much on the 1120cc injectors, so I did start off at a conservative estimate of 943. And keep in mind, you can't actually enter the exact values in here just because of the number format. Same case with the latency values. Try to find the injector in that table, but if not, just go for something close. Um, we're going to end up using the fuel trim data to tune this anyways. All right guys, well the first thing that we're gonna do is reset the fuel trim, so I already disconnected the battery, so we're good there. Um, we're gonna let the car warm up, and after that we're gonna go on the highway and cruise at a steady 60 miles an hour. So the goal is just to log our fuel trims at steady state, so that's gonna be our long-term fuel trims at the mid-level. Now these fuel trims do cycle every four minutes or so, so the short terms will evolve into the long terms. So the goal is to drive for about 16 to 20 minutes and then we're going to come back and look at our logs and uh, see what kind of work we'll have to do to our scaling. Alright guys, well we just got back from our first run and I just looked over the logs and our fuel trim at the long term mid value is pegged at negative 12.5% which I believe is the max. So if we continue to let this happen, um, the ECU would definitely throw a check engine light but we are going to correct that. Basically the ECU is pulling 12.5% fuel at the mid range fuel equation so it's thinking that our injectors are smaller than they actually are injecting way too much fuel. That stems from our injector scaling value being too low um, so we're basically going to add uh, the trim error value 12.5% and I'm going to add a few more percentage to that. It's a little bit confusing because the higher the number the smaller the pulse width so uh, we're going to go to a bigger number to reduce the fuel in. So now we'll flash that value over. We're going to disconnect the battery or re reset the fuel trims and try it all again. All right, just finished another run and I must say it does kind of suck not having cruise control, but it is an Evo, so uh, who cares? Anyways, we are still pulling about 3% fuel on the mid-range. Um, so I am going to bump up the injector value just a tad bit more. I'm aiming for plus or minus 2% for all of my fuel trims. Uh, so hopefully this does the trick and this is the last run that we have to make. Alright, well I am stoked because I just looked at the latest log and we are sitting at 0.19% for our long term mid value. So we are pretty much right on the money for our injector scale and value. So now we're going to reset the fuel trims and let the car idle for 20 minutes and log the long term fuel trims at the low setting. This setting is mostly affected by the injector latency values, just because at idle that pulse width is going to be shorter, so the latency value is going to make a way bigger difference as opposed to later on in the rev range when those pulse widths are going to be a lot bigger and that latency value is going to be a smaller percentage of the overall fueling. All 
All right, so the long-term fuel trim at the low set-in is approaching about negative 7%. So that means we're gonna have to pull 7% out of our latency table. So we're gonna shift the whole thing down 7% and hopefully that should get us right on the money in terms of our fuel trims at idle. All right, well, we are right on the money again, which is awesome. So we are pretty much almost done here. The last thing that we're gonna adjust are the start primer and cranking tables. So right now it's just a fixed pulse width value depending on the coolant temp. Um, so basically what we're going to do is multiply the current value times the ratio between the old injector size, which is the stock 513, divided by the new injector size, which is 1125. So basically we're going to multiply that entire table by 0.456. Alright, well that's going to be a wrap for today's episode. We have successfully installed and tuned bigger fuel injectors on the EVO 8. In the next episode, we're gonna be taking this thing to the dyno and doing some wide open throttle tuning and see what kind of jam this thing puts out. I hope you guys learned something new from this video. If so, like, comment, and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.